Good morning and welcome to DBS This Morning. Maureen here once again and happy to be in your company as always. Three features today because it's Thursday and we're excited about that. We have to stop in first for the headlines. Here is Kendall. Good morning. Time now for a summary of your top stories. Opposition leader Alan Chastney has planned a walk to celebrate his return to Parliament. The opposition leader had filed an application to prevent himself from being barred from the House sittings until the final outcome of a case brought against the Speaker of the House for unlawful detention and a suspension from Parliament. If they are in any way in breach of it, it's contempt of court. So it's an undertaking they give to me, but it's endorsed and sanctioned in front of the court. So it becomes a court order at that point, we call it a consenting court order. But it has the, the enforcement of the court. I want to be very clear that the undertaking does not require me to apologize. The undertaking does not require me to withdraw the statement. So I am giving back my full um, authority and ability to present myself in front of the House. Un that, that should never have been taken away, correct? Should never have been taken away. On the day Shastney makes his return to Parliament, he has invited his supporters to join him on a victory walk from the Leader of the Opposition's office to the House of Parliament. Supplies of rice, flour and sugar have been fully restocked at the government supply warehouse. We wanted to inform our customers that we are well stocked. So we have rice, we have flour, we have white sugar, we have brown sugar, right? So everything is well stocked and it's also available at other distribution sites. So what we're trying to do is let persons know that in order to cut cost transportation, we let persons know that we have these commodities available in the north which is Babano, we have Denry, we have Castries. We want people to know that they are available at different um, locations at the same price at the, as the government supply warehouse. The Bakers Association also received the shipment of specialty flour from the Eastern Caribbean group of companies, manufacturers of flour, animal feeds, rice, soda and bottled water. Wednesday was World Hypertension Day and according to the Minister for Health, in an address to mark the occasion, the number of persons on island suffering from hypertension is rising. World Hypertension Day is observed every May 17th in order to raise awareness and promote hypertension prevention, detection and control, uh, deferred to October 17th, 2020 due to the COVID-19 pandemic. High blood pressure is the main risk factor to develop cardiovascular disease. This year's theme places emphasis on the importance of awareness. Persons are encouraged to know their blood pressure readings. Additionally, they are guided to ensure that these readings are accurate. Accurate readings can be achieved through proper measurements. The Ministry of Health, through the HEARTS Initiative, continues to train all staff in accurate blood pressure measurement. The WHO and the United States Centers for Disease Control and Prevention launched the Global Hearts Initiative in 2016. With its five technical packages, the initiative aims to improve heart health worldwide. The Hearts technical package itself gives guidance on more effectively detecting and treating people with hypertension in primary health care. Over $10,000 in fewer vouchers have been disbursed to registered farmers in the Babano constituency to help with the irrigation of their farms. The vouchers were provided by the parliamentary representative for Babano, Dr. Virginia Albert Poyard. Now, some people may have said, so long, what are you waiting for? And so on. But I have to depend on the Minister of Agriculture to give me the support for me to deliver in the, in the magnitude and the volume that you expect. But as parliamentary rep, when you had a cry of your farmers, small as it is, you have to make a little effort to reach out to them. The MP presented the vouchers to the farmers at a ceremony at the Babylon Multipurpose Center recently. Those are your top stories. Thanks for watching. Good morning.
Our first feature today, yesterday marked World Hypertension Day, and we've got a number of health pra practitioners from across the region who have culminated here in St. Lucia, um, together with PAHO, um, seeking to find solutions, you know, just broad broadening the conversation to create awareness and all of that. We caught up with them. Let's take an insight into this. We're here, it's, hyper, it's World Hypertension Day, and we caught up with uh, Dr. Sear. They are having, um, is it a workshop or a convention? What is happening at Bay Gardens today? Okay, so we're having our Hearts Regional Workshop um, for the Barbados and the Eastern Caribbean countries. We Hearts, of course, is a technical package. Um, it's, it's, it's a quality improvement program for the management of high blood pressure and that is to actually reduce the risk and the death caused by what we call cardiovascular diseases. So we're having a workshop and we've invited delegates from all of the Caribbean so we could discuss how to better manage hypertension or high blood pressure, um, learn from best practices, learn from what, what we've had happen in the past and plan the way forward to actually improve hypertension management in the Caribbean so that we get better results in terms of deaths caused by cardiovascular diseases. Doc, let's just break it down because yes. I know the news would have probably covered this day. Um, in terms of stats, in terms of how are we faring within the Caribbean, why is it so necessary um, to have workshops like these where you coincide with the other the rest of the Caribbean to ensure that we could be working in unison to find solutions and better practices for hypertension amongst us. What is our stats like within the Caribbean? Okay, so in the Caribbean, our stats are not good. We have, um, in some of our Caribbean countries actually have the high, highest prevalence um, in, in, in Latin America and the Caribbean of hypertension. And um, in St. Lucia, in this? <laughs> ooh, okay, so, so the highest um, is, is about 40, a little over 40. Mm -hmm. Currently, from our recent survey, which was done in 2019, mm -hmm. our prevalence stands at about 39%, okay? Mm -hmm. So we're talking about more than a third of our adult population, you know, being hypertensive. Actually, for those persons in our survey that we just did in St. Lucia, mm -hmm. for those persons who were not diagnosed with hypertension, which was the 39%, 37% right. of those persons who were not diagnosed with hypertension had their blood pressures up when we would have, you know, measured. Because I was about to ask you that. Um, they are. What, what are some of the contributing factors to persons ending up with, with cardiovascular or hypertension? So I'd say, I'd say two things. One of the, 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 the problems with high blood pressure and the fact that it's causing deaths in our countries is that we do not know that we are hypertensive. So we're not paying attention to, to checking ourselves and checking our health and, and seeing what our numbers are. So that, that's probably the first thing I want to say to St. Lucians and those watching is that we need to be aware of what our numbers are. If you don't know you have something, you can't do anything about it, yeah? Number one. Um, in terms of those things that contribute to us having a, a high prevalence of hypertension, of course we have our genetics, mm -hmm. yeah? But we also have what we call our lifestyle um, factors such as you know the smoking the alcohol, alcohol use oh. which is you know we have a problem <laughs> with that yeah. we have our increased salt or sodium intake we have our you know we, we eat a lot when we eat we don't only eat a lot we eat the bad foods we eat foods high in, in, in fats you know um, high in calories and so on we put on weights actually we have a problem with obesity in the Caribbean and in St. Lucia we have a problem with obesity which is a contributing factor to um, some hypertension as well um, stress levels you know lack of sleep all, all of that so um, we need to be aware of what those risk factors are we also need to be aware of whether or not you know, be, be screening ourselves. Go, there, there are places available. We're making places available nowadays. We put in blood pressure monitors in, in the malls to make sure persons can actually get their blood pressures checked. You know, the health centers are open. They could get their blood pressures checked. They could buy their monitors, make sure they proper, you know, accurate, validated monitors, check, um, get their blood pressures checked. Um, but we want to encourage solutions to be aware of their blood pressures, you know, to, to measure them, to measure them accurately. And of course, control is really, really vital. If you know you have high blood pressure, 
getting to those numbers that will put you less at risk for heart attacks and strokes and allow you to live a, a, a longer life, you know, and a healthier life, uh, uh, of course, what we want to see Wonderful. is important. Yes. Well, we have three persons here also at the, the workshop from, from PAHO, yes. um, representing for the, 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 um, the Americas and yes. Barbados and, and the Eastern Caribbean and the, also the Caribbean. And we just wanted to get an insight from them as well as no to, you know, what, what you all hope to, to come out of, of this, this workshop. You know, so we're going to go on over. We've got two of the representatives here from, um, of course, Barbados and the Eastern Caribbean. You are. Um, I'm going to go on over on now to 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 Doc. The stats does not look good if we are to be honest with ourselves. So speak to um, how important it is now to work with other sectors. We 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 could we could go there because schools in terms of the that we offer to our schools. Um, how how is PAHO? or is PAHO rather taking that, or oh well, would that fall under your purview? Absolutely. Um, so we work um, in the many areas that you just mentioned. So we are also um, advising the countries regarding uh, front of label nutritional uh, packages. It is important that a parent know what food they're buying for their children. So having very clear, easy to understand nutritional uh, labels is very and it's important and we are um, encouraging the countries to adopt the best which are the octagonal uh, front of package label that is an example we're also working on a school nutrition policy which um, is precisely what you were mentioning how to bring healthy food to our children and so we have here the parents buying better food for home and we have the schools serving better food and sensitizing the principals the uh, educators uh, the vendors so that they're serving so that that's one area and the other policies as well that have been mentioned salt reduction um, as well as um, getting people um, better conditions to be active that is also part of it and also our health systems yes we want to work with others but we also want to strengthen our health system and that's what we're doing here today so when it comes to NCD and I think that's one of the challenges that we do have because these are lifestyle diseases these are long-term diseases a person with hypertension or diabetes or cancer it's 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 for a lifetime right and one of the reasons sometimes government um, don't invest or organization don't invest because we love to see quick wins we want to see results right away and with NCD you don't get that right away if you impact the changes that Dr. Haraldo just mentioned about the front of package labeling and the nutrition in school you're not gonna see that result tomorrow you're gonna see that 10 years down the line so while we want to see immediate changes now in terms of those inter intervention we know that the, the overall impact in terms of the health in terms of the economy we're gonna see that like 10 years 20 years down the road. So at this moment we are working towards the 2030 sustainable development goals and trying to meet those goals by reducing our prevalence of NCD and reducing the mortality so persons dying from NCD reduce. So we then have to understand that the health of the nation is really the wealth of the nation and we have to invest in health, in all areas of health in order to make a positive impact in terms of the growth and development of the country. Wonderful. Well said. Thank you so much, Doc. No. Fortunately, or incidentally or fortunately, our second feature today, um, we caught up with a vegan family. Now, our first feature, we deal with hypertension and some of the things that we can do um, to maintain a better health practice and to lower our, our numbers, our stats. And we caught up with a vegan family. Let's tap in and find us some more. You might just find it interesting. The vegan family is here with us. I'm trying to go vegan these days. So um, I thought it was interesting. This family right here, Roxanne being the, the mother, and we've got Junan and the little baby. Now, I met with them uh, through Helen's daughter, and I thought their journey was quite interesting. Roxanne, Junan, baby, <laughs> hi. <laughs> hi How are you? Good Roxanne, day. I want to talk about your yes. business. You guys, this is a full-blown vegan family. You guys do nothing other than vegan. From baby down, you guys yes. are doing the vegan stuff. Yes. Um, so tell me about 
your entry into the world of the of plant base plant base all right well for starters uh seeing many who have passed on you know it honestly broke my heart and then coming closer to home seeing i had health issues myself namely preeclampsia anemia to name a few vegan avenue came about and it's been quite a journey i'll say ins and outs because really and truly same Lucia has no scope for it as much you know and everyone is telling us go global but you know it has to start home it has to start in your home most importantly and him Gian here my daughter you know we I was trying to eat you know stuff to get my iron up since I was iron deficient that being anemia yeah and it's like no mommy I don't want that you know from the inside you know she never wanted it you know and then well I could say spoken from her dad you know she will be a strong young woman coming up you know plan based so i believe all that spoken into her life impacted my life and so with his encouragement and you know the boost that i felt i mean i was always on the journey of healthy eating you know i was actually surprised that i myself turned down pork i was a pork lover i'll tell you that <laughs> you know every christmas okay. i was looking forward right. to that but I said there was something more to life and even with dairy I realized that was just not it right. I mean I was always getting the flu and I say you know what something needs to change so since you've gone full-blown vegan talk to us, uh, us about your personal experience in terms of your health how you feel how it, you said you used to get a flu so you hardly get mm -hmm. flu them days oh well <laughs> except that time I don't know where in the world it came from, <laughs> you know, but that that's just that one time. Mm -hmm. I believe I may have, you know, deviated from the routine a little bit because I mean, everybody has a cheat day, right? Mm -hmm. Not saying that you, you know, you won't, you know, because I mean, Senusha itself, as I mentioned earlier, and we'll reiterate it, that um, the scope for vegan or plant-based mm -hmm. to be exact is not all that great to say as opposed to you being the u.s and you have access full access more or less to but honestly it's been a great journey thus far right. i feel great uh you look great I, yeah thank you <laughs> thank you and yeah it, it's i want to talk to daddy a little bit lively let, Dad, let, let me let, no she's she, she's indicating that you were the one who introduced them to this vegan lifestyle yes let's talk about you and your vegan journey how long have you have you always been no since when did well, you start and what prompted it in covid oh. and it's it's been i could say it's uh i'm carrying a legacy where from my father's side of business i right. thought of turning it into a healthier service provider uh -huh. because I've lost a few friends, family due to various illnesses. Right. Likewise, my wife who had a near-death experience through prayer camps here, wow. and hence yes. the booth of Vegan Avenue. Mm -hmm. So I thought of creating healthier products. Mm -hmm. It's not like you will not eat what you like, but in a healthier way. Right. So you guys actually prepare vegan meals. So you're not just yes. vegan appetite and you eat vegan. You have gone ahead and now you, you, you create what it is that you're you're eating and you're not creating for persons uh, as well right so let's talk about that um well we know we have cake lovers mm -hmm. cookie lovers burger lovers so why not have that down to earth kind of experience because mm -hmm. these days we just put anything in our body yes. and then wonder why we're feeling sick or you know mm -hmm. those sorts of things we get through our body daily you want to feel good, but you're not eating anything that makes you right, feel good. Right, right, right. Yeah. Now, and if persons want to do catering and ordering and stuff like that, yeah, they want to do a thing. So, like, you can do that. You can do that as well. All right. Yeah. Where can we find you on Instagram or, or, or Facebook? Yes, Facebook, Vegan Avenue, and at Vegan Avenue 323 on IG. Wonderful. Well, guys, I, I, I hope. contact numbers. Yes, please. 484 4347, that's me, Roxanne, and my dear partner and husband. 717 4308. Wonderful. So there you go, guys. Um, I don't know. Pray for me. <laughs> I really want to. But, but
but it's been a it's been a challenge on my ends but i think i will at least start you know if i don't complete but at least you got to start some point yes. but um i think yeah i think the time is now i i, I think when you're getting Indeed, older you're starting to feel the now. you're starting to feel the, the you know the effects of some of the things you ingest so yes. Jaden, you're going with me. We're doing that together. We're starting. Jaden, yes, man. <laughs> Jaden and I is going to try to start All soon. Right. <laughs> Wonderful. No Thanks, guys. Well, Thanks again. Well, you find us on the <laughs>feature i promise you we didn't plan any of this but they seem to all tie in together hypertension being our first second vegan plant-based eating and our third feature we have a, a an event that is coming up on this saturday by the the mixed martial arts association here in st lucia they, they're looking to create more awareness and to build upon the sport of mixed martial arts movement is a very big part of staying healthy and, and and taking care of your health as well we caught up with vault and um and also a regional rep who is here um for the occasion let's tap into this well hello there we here with um a handsome guy we're telling me what to say a handsome fella he named volt right <laughs> we're talking mixed martial arts today um there's an event coming up on saturday and we wanted to shed some light on that we've got we we, we want to find out more about it volt what really going on here bro well basically what's happening is we've been developing and and building mixed martial arts in St. Lucia. For those who don't know what mixed martial arts is, it's a combat sport that engenders several other martial arts systems. So if you may know about UFC, that's basically what we're working on here. We've been doing it for a little while. Last year, we actually came back from two events. Um, wow. We got silver medals from each. Really? Yes. Oh, I'm in the dark over here. And so now <laughs> we're trying to really develop and build mixed martial arts in St. Lucia. So we're having an event which is going to be live streaming on Facebook on Saturday. Um, we, we have with us right now, Mr. Jason Frazier. Who is actually the president of the Pan American region and he's wow. actually come to support us and to show that we are we are here and we're ready to grow. Absolutely. We're talking, you know, how you do? I'm good, I'm good. I, <laughs> well, I feel great. like I'm home, you know. Oh, well, of course yeah. you're home. It's one, one one Caribbean, we yeah. good, we in this. Now, you made a long journey. Well, not long, long, but long. <laughs> yes. You know, a long journey to support this initiative. Yeah. Um now, now first we want a little insight. Mixed martial arts and the Caribbean. <clears throat> well, mixed martial arts is definitely growing in the Caribbean. Uh, St. Lucia is the baby among the set. And I want to say that they have been doing a tremendous job so far under the leadership of uh, Mr. Murray and his team. I'm very quite satisfied, hence the reason that we are here. I believe that development starts from grassroots, and that is what this event is all about. Right. It will be termed under the International Mixed Martial Arts Federation, which is the IMMAF, as a historic event wow. because it is the first event taking place here and that is the reason why i believe you know my journey was worth coming to be a part of history so when it is written i could say i was in st lucia for that first event right. but trust me we have bigger events coming off later on in the year in st lucia you're going to be bigger we're going to be inviting other caribbean countries to come and to be a part of this this is just basically an introduction of what mixed martial arts is all about mm -hmm. and to sensitize St. Lucia to sensitize the people to bring awareness that this sport is here and this sport is here to stay. And you know, we have a female athlete from St. Lucia too, which is one of the, I'm telling you, that's a big thing for us in the region. Right. And Dee, who is well known also here in St. Lucia, she's a female athlete in St. Lucia. I think she's 105 pounds. Yes. Wow. Uh, to be exact, and she'll be fighting in Trinidad come July 1st. Whoa. So St. Lucia having good representation. I'm well pleased to say though that, you know, St. Lucia have an ambassador in Al. I call him Al. I think that is his right name. Right. And I'll have one, two silver medal for St. Lucia, one in St. Martin and one in Trinidad. So St. Lucia definitely have potential, have growth. But what we definitely need is the media involved because the media is a vehicle to any success. They can make it, they can break it. That is one. And then two, we need the government support. We need the government to come out and support our young people in the rural communities. Come and take the sport and spread it through. Mixed martial arts is the fastest growing sport in the Right now, you could right, research it for yourself, right. like the UFC. Mixed martial arts is growing all over the world. But in St. Lucia, we want to be able to go into all the trenches, all the rural communities and bring all those youths who have potential. Not everybody could be a journalist like you, not everybody could be a minister, a yeah. doctor. So we have those who represent sports. And sports is a 79 billion US dollar industry. And trust me, mixed martial arts already put in St. Lucia on the map in St. Lucia. Right. It's a tremendous... 
it's a tremendous work in the making and I know for, for sure that I'm personally going to be proud of what is taking place in wow. St. Lucia this weekend. Okay. It's going to be, in, right. the Let's next time we're doing the there. event here, we're looking forward to bring a cage. So we're going to have the real deal wow. in a cage. This weekend, we we're just looking to whet the, the appetites of St. Lucia and this is what the sport is all about. Wonderful. Where will the event be? Uh, the this event Saturday? will be at Bosejo in the facility. Okay. Yes. But what can be expected? What time we're going to be kicking we're off? We're going to be can kicking off the live stream at 3 p.m. At the moment, because it's, it's still small, stream? yes, All because right. it's only small, we're not allowing persons to come in. It's going to be very, very small. Mm -hmm. But we're going to make sure you guys have first rate into the action. That's why we right. live streaming, so you could tune in and see everything that's going Where on behind the stream? scenes, everything. We stream on Facebook on our um, Facebook um, page, St. Lucia Mixed Martial Arts Federation. Well, this sounds like it's complete. I, I, I'm, I'm happy we're finding out about it now. I'm blaming you. You should have given us more insight at an early age. You're going to get your little flack afterwards. But certainly we're looking forward to that. And like you said, we are going to be streaming from what time on this Saturday? From 3 p.m. From 3 p.m. Facebook. Solution Mixed Martial Arts Federation. Gentlemen, thank you so very much. Thank you might just see me in there soon. Yes, looking forward. <laughs> of course. Wonderful. Thank you, guys. Sure. And that's our show for this morning. I hope you enjoyed it and you're looking forward to joining us again here tomorrow for DBS This Morning. And remember, hypertension, our stats does not look good. And you can make a decision to take some form of step starting today towards bettering that for yourself, for the country, for the world.